This is Carcone Carne. I'm James Van Osdell, and Carcone Carne is presented by Alex Ross Art. Alex Ross, he is one of my absolute favorite creative people on earth. He is a painter, an illustrator, a writer, a graphic novelist, a comic book creator. His work is, it's legendary, Kingdom Come, Marvels. So much work for DC and Marvel, Dynamite, all the different publishers, all the different pop culture tangents he's been on. And Alex Ross has his own YouTube channel. You should follow him. But here's Alex to talk about that. Hi, this is Alex Ross. I appreciate you guys supporting our YouTube and uh, we create new content every week. I hope you will continue to support us and please subscribe. It's car con carne. Let's eat in the car. It's car con carne. All right, are you feeling good? You ready? Yeah. All right, it is Carcon Carne recording outside Bistro Monadnock in the Monad Monadnock. Easy for me to say. <laughs> Monadnock building in, in Chicago. In the land of Monadnock. 325 South Federal, uh, right across from Federal Plaza, the Union League uh, Club, downtown Chicago. Next to me, well, boys are going to eat. Uh, he is Robert Fleischman. He's an artist, a singer, a guy who co wrote a couple of Journey's most fam famous songs. That's no exaggeration. Uh, a man who's given a voice to the raging guitar of Vinnie Vincent. He's a creative spirit. What am I leaving out? Just boy genius. Boy, he's a boy genius. He's 15. <laughs> I can, just came out of the womb. Uh, can we start there with Journey? I, I know people tend to gravitate to yeah. with you. I, I want to talk about the new album that's coming up. I want to talk about your artwork. But I, I think forever, forevermore... When people mention your name, they're going to mention the fact that you co-wrote "Wheel in the Sky." Yeah, I, I did that, and, uh, anytime. and anytime "Winds of March," all for you. So, you were the lead singer of Journey for for a cup uh, of for, coffee for five for, months. for five uh, for five minute coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> but you were that bridge between <clears throat> that jazz rock period. Yeah, it was a it was a jazz rock fusion band that played fifteen minute songs, and. Um, and uh, CBS was going to uh, knock them off uh, the label. And I, um, uh, before the meeting of that conversation, I was with a guy named Barry Fay, who was a um, promoter, uh, big promoter in the United States, and he was based out of Colorado. So basically, Barry Fay and um, Bill Graham split the the map of the United States like you get this piece and I get this piece so Barry got the 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 the, the mid middle section uh, of uh, the United States and um, and and so Graham had the East Coast and the West Coast so anyway these were the two of the biggest promoters and um, I happened to be managed by Barry and so I uh, was in a band here in Chicago. Because you lived in Chicago. Yeah, in the 70s, uh, 75 or 76, somewhere around there. And um, I was called up by a, um, an agent that was uh, a booking agency here in Chicago with a guy named um, Frank Ran. He was the uh, guy that called me up. He knew about me from a manager I had in, in L.A. And so they asked me if I'd be interested in coming to Chicago and play with, uh, check out some bands. So I went out a couple, of, quite a few nights. I, I checked out seven bands, and I picked one. And the reason I picked that certain band was because they were playing stuff like uh, Pink Floyd and, and Journey. Not Journey, but, uh, excuse me, um, Queen. And I liked them because they had a, uh, a kind of an atmospheric tone to them. So I, I, I leaned toward that. And um, I, I, I played Beginnings, Thirsty Whale, opened up for Cheap Trick, um, got to know them well. Um, uh, Beginnings, did lots of nights and Beginnings, uh, Haymakers, all these places. Now, these in, are all in the places time. that are just They're historic gone and legendary. I, I know them by name. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I played all those places, and then I got this call and uh, from Denver and asked me if I'd be willing to come to Denver and, um, and, and meet with this guy who wanted to manage me. So I, I met with him, 
Uh, he asked me about a couple of days later if I'd like to uh, do a, um, a showcase for CBS Records. And so I did the showcase. I, I, uh, in a week's time, I wrote seven songs. I put a band together. And boom, I, I did this showcase for on a snowy night. And we didn't even know if the people were even going to arrive, but they sure. did. And then three days later, I was asked to come back home where I'm from, uh, California, L.A., uh, to... Um, to have a meeting at, at uh, in Century City with uh, CBS executives. So I went to that meeting. They said, hey, we uh, have this band called Journey. We'd love to see if you could, um, you know, add something to this band. Uh, and so uh, they flew me up to San Francisco, and I uh, went to SIR Studios, and uh, we had some lunch, talked, then got up on stage and we jammed for about an hour and a half and um, that was uh, great chemistry. It's an interesting way to hook up with the band. It, it seems like almost like an arranged marriage. Yeah, it was very much so. And um, so I, 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 I wrote these songs with them, you know, Wheel in the Sky, Anytime, Winds of March, uh, All For You, so Diva, all these other ones. And so um, we toured uh, and they would do three songs, and then they would introduce me, and then I would come up and do the songs that I, we had, the, the new form, formation of the right. band. Hold that thought. We're talking about Journey. Again, we're at Bistro Monadnock, <clears throat> 325 South Federal in Chicago, and they're bringing food to the car. <laughs> For Robert? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Welcome back. Hey, yeah. How are you doing? Let me, uh, how we, okay. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Care if those are Good evening, left. sir. Good, so <laughs> Good evening. Got this a pair is, of the uh, this is ridiculous. our bistro burgers for you. Yes, it was, and some of the best in Chicago, uh, or uh, in the land, I'd say. Yeah, 80-20, uh, Thank you. prime dry-aged uh, steak sirloin for you with a little gruyere. Yes. Ooh, gruyere. Uh, pickled onion. Yes. A little smear of... I, I've, had, I've had it before, yes, and I'm, yes. that's why we're here. Right. Some beef fat fries. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Pleasure. I love this. Thank you. Of course. Enjoy. Any beverage for either of you gentlemen? Um, Soda. I would love a Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Uh, I, I'm fine right now. <laughs> all right. I, I, I just He's need... overwhelmed by trying to eat all this in the car with, yes, with fancy I, uh, China. <laughs> oh my God. I, I should have warned you that this isn't easy. I, I, got, I gather. This isn't easy. We need the, we need the little phone yes. holder here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, yeah, like like a, a, at a drive-in, at, like at a drive-in uh, uh, like hamburger place. <laughs> anyway, thank you. We'll we'll manage somehow. I, I do have a cup holder you can use. Okay. Yeah, this is the tricky part. This is where you really earn oh, you earn your dinner here, and you, and you get and you get food all over your car. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. The car's ten years old. It's fine. Okay. I'm gonna roll up your window. All right. Though I enjoy the sound of the L and police sirens in the background. Mm -hmm. All right, so you've been here before. You love this burger. Like, yeah. Th there was no question in your Chef mind. Chef Johnny is um, amazing. I mean, it, this place is not just, you know, a burger place. This place is just an incredible eatery. But you don't, you are a, Midwe a Midwesterner. You talked about living in Chicago in the 70s. You live in Wisconsin now. I live in Wisconsin, in Racine, Wisconsin. But you make lots of trips yes, down I, south here. Uh huh. I do. Um, I'm very good friends with Man Cow, as you know, hmm. and um, and my publicist um, James Webb Dell, and um, you know I I've always loved Chicago. I I've made more friends here in Chicago than I would in Los Angeles. Well, I believe that. And, I'm, and I'm I'm and I'm a native of Los Angeles, and the people in the Midwest are so warm and so much just generous. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, I, generous and, and down to earth. And, um, you know, I grew up in Hollywood I've, since the 70s. I've seen the whole evolution of that place. All right, I'm dying to try this burger. It just I, I, just, <laughs> I know. It's... I just put the camera on it. I'm going <laughs> to hold it up again. It's a nice size burger, too. Yeah, I, but I, it, it is the most flavorable burger you'll you'll have in some time. Oh, I think a caper just fell out. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Um but we've all been to those burger places where the burgers are just obnoxiously sized and you can't finish the burger. Like, I'm going to be able to finish this. I'm going to feel good about this. Oh, yeah. This is substantial, but it's not stupid. And, but what's substantial is the, the flavor of it. Mm -hmm. For those who are just listening and not watching, Robert came 
properly dressed for something that's not this podcast. <laughs> you, you definitely classed up everything here. <laughs> now here's here's where I face my greatest challenge. And the Diet Coke. You are too kind. Thank you very much. Enjoy. We appreciate you. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to work. So Journey, the, the, the arranged marriage. Yeah. You hit it off with the guys. You, were, you wrote a handful of songs. Let's let's drop anchor on Wheel in the Sky for a minute. Where did that come from? Can you remember that far back? Well, it came from... Um, Neil was playing acoustic guitar. Neil Shun. And we were... Um, I think we were in Texas. He started playing this acoustic guitar and this, this whole thing. You know, the music. And so... Uh, I came up with a melody, and I wrote the I wrote the lyrics in about twenty minutes. It was really funny. I feel like all the good music stories are like that. Like the the songs weren't labored right. over. They they weren't labored over. They just they came they do, they came to you. It's like automatic writing. Yeah, I, I I've actually um, I've written a, I wrote a song, and um, I just turned on the tape recorder, and I had the acoustic guitar in my hand, and the whole, Every lyric, everything just came out like boom, like it was a done song. And um, and I, I, I talked to people, other musicians about it, and I talked to Tom Petty once about it, and he goes, I've done that like one or two, three times, you know. And um, it happens sometimes. It's like automatic writing. It's just like it's, it's like it comes from the... From outer space, you know, and you just get you just get this flow, and it just happens. And if you're lucky, you turned on the tape recorder to capture it. So you, you hit you hit this groove with Journey. You're writing these songs, these songs that again we know by heart today. And then just like that, you're not in the band, and Steve Perry's in. Right. I, I know you've told the story a million times, but for those who haven't heard, for those who are new to Robert Fleischman, what what happened there? Um. CBS had this um, A&R guy, I think his name was Michael Dilbeck, and Michael had been um, funding um, Steve Perry's demos, Okay. and Steve was in a band, and, um, and in, in the band that he was in, which was a very good band because I happened to hear the demos of this guy later on. And um, the bass player in the band died, so the band dissipated, and so uh, Steve was all just by himself, and this Dilbeck guy paid for his uh, demos and everything. And so what came down to it was Dilbeck wanted Steve to be in Journey. So he calls up Herbie Herbert the uh, manager of uh, Journey, and he um, he says, look it, if you take Steve, I'll give you um, radio, get a radio budget, get you a producer, get you this and that, da 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 So it was like the, you know, godfather, I'll make you an offer mm-hmm. you can't refuse. Mm-hmm. So I happened he, to... He leveraged every tool in his he arsenal. He leveraged everything mm-hmm. so that he could get me out. Well... The band itself did not want me to leave. They were pissed off at Herbie, but they do what Herbie says because Herbie can sell Eskimos ice, <laughs> you know. And I and I admire him for it. And I've never had any bad or ill feelings towards him because he was an incredible entrepreneur. You know, he he just he 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 sold that that band like a Hershey's bar. You well, know? and here's the thing: you were removed from the band right and but then, i wrote all their first hits right. in a sense so i didn't walk out with just nothing mm-hmm. you know i walked out with all my publishing which i'm sure probably supports your art habit to it, this day. it's supported my life for over 40 something years that's awesome but back in back when you were and it's played everywhere every day everywhere my kids know it i mean like yes but back when you were removed from the band you had no way of knowing that journey would become journey. No. So it was probably just like, okay, well, shit happens. This is another band. Yeah, you know? exactly. 
you had no way of knowing that five uh-huh. years later. But it was a very nice, lucrative situation. And about three three months later, I was, uh, you know, standing in front of uh, Clive Davis from uh, Arista Records, um, you know, the big mogul of uh, yeah. CBS Records. So I was sort of like all discovered again by um, Clive Davis, and I uh, I did an album mm-hmm. with him, and I uh, it was produced with me and um, B- J- uh, Jimmy Iovine. And, These are big names. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, and so um, I, I did the album, and then I toured, opening up for um, Van Halen, and uh, and did um, uh, Day on the Green in uh, San Francisco, uh, opening up for uh, Eddie Money, Sammy Hagar, Boston. You know, I got, and then when I was with Journey, we played here at uh, Soldier Field. That's amazing. And you also, you, know, you toured with Emerson Lake, Emerson Lake and Palmer, didn't mm-hmm. you? All right, I'm going to jump. You know, a, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit because I became really good friends with Keith, and that a couple years later led to discussions of you possibly joining Asia. Yes, and um, Geffen Records was um, they had um, John Kalodner. I know the name. And our guy. Okay. You've probably seen him in the uh, a lot of Aerosmith um, videos. Sure. The yeah. guy with the white, the big beard and the white suit. Yep. That's John Kalodner. And I'm going to interrupt you really quick. This burger's awesome. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. Can I have another bite? <laughs> Sorry. I, I, the tricky thing for interviewees is they have to keep talking, and I kind of just get to eat and, and listen. Uh-huh. Well, I'm juggling the hamburger in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, so Asia. Yeah. Um, I got these. Uh, I got cassettes of the whole Asia album. It was completed. And uh, and 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 John Claudner was one of these guys who was like the kingmaker. Mm-hmm. You know, he 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 revised um, Aerosmith. And he uh, championed uh, White Snake and all these bands like that. But anyway, he was always calling me up saying, "Hey, um, y- your voice needs to be on the radio and all this stuff." And I go, "Well, John, then you know, fucking sign me." You know. So then he would call me up and go, "Hey, I want you to play with this band." So he set me up to play with um, Michael Shanker, mm-hmm. which was a nightmare. Uh, Asia, um, uh, some other bands. But anyway. Asia, I listened to this album, and I'm going like, this is a great album. Mm-hmm. And I love um, Wetton. I thought he was great, King Crim- Crimson and all that stuff. So John Wetton, I, I love UK. Yeah, yeah. I actually played with him. Um, so anyway, um, so I go to England. I get picked up. Uh, I go, go to this rehearsal studio with him, and... There, we're, 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 we're playing, and all the songs were not in my register. Interesting. Because you, you had a high register. Yeah. I just didn't have the nerve to say to these f- fucking guys, I'm standing right in front of, like, see how. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, 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 and. Carl Palmer. Carl Palmer and, um, Jeffrey Dunn's, and, um, and it was just like, Fuck! <laughs> what am I going to say? You know. So, can you can you can you change the key on all these songs? No way. So th- this was like a, a very self actualized moment. Like you realized this isn't a fit. You, you, did you raise the flag? Not a they matching. Did? Not a matching tie and handkerchief. No. Uh, did you realize that before they did? Yes. That's. Oh yeah. That's a and, professional right there. And so I. So two days later, I just I, I said to uh, Peter Mensch, I said Peter, their manager. I said, look, I, I I can't do this. It's just it's just not working. And um, but I didn't have the nerve to say, hey, Peter, can you have them all re- rearrange the songs and put them in a higher pitch in in my sweet spot? <laughs> you know, I, I just didn't I just didn't have the balls to do it. So anyway, 
I, I, at the end of it, I said, look, that album is great. That was t- that was tailor made for John Wetton. Mm-hmm. I said, "What you're actually asking me to do is fit in a suit that's tailor made for John Wetton and and fill it. it ain't going to be the same. I'm not going to fill that suit the same way. So I got to I got to say, hey, let John do it. Don't fuck around with anybody. You're you're listening to some guy who wants to always rearrange a band by inserting a lead vocalist here and there to try to." To, to get um, more uh, album sales or whatever. It's not about, you know, this, this band is about art. And let's, let you just go ahead and keep going and because you, it's going to succeed. That was a really, that was, that was a good move for them. It was a good move for you. Just under, like, you, you knew who you were. Well, and what you I, could do. When I was 18 or 19, Maybe, 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 no, maybe 20, 20, in my 20s. I got called by the management of, of, of Genesis. And they wanted me. What, what year was this? When Peter Gabriel left Genesis. So this is mid 70s. This is right. around the journey time. Right. So I got an offer to uh, go to England to. Um, to take the place of Peter Gabriel and I was like I there's no way I can take his, take his place I, I it's like I, I still draw with Crayola <laughs> <laughs> you know this guy is like just amazing just intellectual monster and so luckily they called me up and go well you know um we're not going to have you come because uh, Phil decided to go in the studio and uh, re- and record uh, the vocals, and uh, it, it's turning out really well. And I'm going like, well, okay, well, great, you know. But that was uh, another situation. I, I mean, I've been, uh, and we never heard from Genesis again after that. Mm, well, I'm kidding, <laughs> in a sense. But um, it was Trick of the Tail, of course, which was a great fucking album. The title track alone, yes. Yes. That had Dance on a vol- Volcano, too, I think. I don't know that. Great album. Um, as you talk about these close calls with Asia and Genesis and with your journey experience, there is a vague sense of always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Right. With your career. And uh-huh. Have you heard that before? Have you felt that well, before? Well, I, I know that. But, but look, uh, out of the pool of uh, uh, billions of people... I've gotten the you know my number called, so I'm very grateful, yes. and I'm uh, and I guess I have something there that creates some sort of attraction to possibly have me uh, in 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 that situation. So um, I'm flattered. That's awesome. What can and, you say? And as we march toward the present day, you got to mention Vinnie Vincent. Yeah, Vinnie Vincent, Acts of Kiss. In the 80s, he struck out with Vinnie Vincent's Invasion. You were on that first album doing the vocals for that. Yeah. What was that experience like? It was like a Vinnie Vincent Invasion. <laughs> I mean, um, this was this was definitely the sound of that time. Yeah, that album is, um, has become a cult classic. I don't think it's even on streaming. Well, Much like your first album. Uh, um, yeah, I know. <laughs> Which is kind of in, in on purpose. Um, Vinny, um, uh, he was writing with a guy named Adam w- Adam West. No, not Adam no. West. That's, that's that'd be, Batman. That'd be a cool story. Adam Adam, uh, what's his name? Adam something. But anyway, he this guy Adam was writing with uh, Paul Stanley. Okay. And uh, Vinny was in the same room with uh, with the two of them, and he asked uh, Adam. If uh, he knew uh, any lead singers, and so Adam gave Vinny my number. Vinny called me up. He came to my house. He played me three songs um, that were just incredible. I, the guitar playing and everything was just great. And being a songwriter, I never really leaned towards going into a band where there's somebody else sing, you know, rewriting the songs and mm-hmm. all that stuff, unless it's really incredible. And it happened to be that Vinny's songs were, I thought were pretty fucking rocking. So um, I uh, decided to, uh, you know, work with him. But 
um, in the beginning of the whole relationship, it was going to be a, um, you know, havesy havesy. You know, we, we're, we're together and mm-hmm. whatever deal we get, we split it and all that stuff. But anyway, that didn't happen. What he ended up doing was sort of like this. Uh, let's say we build a house together, you and I. And all of a sudden, you decide that you want to sell the house, and you never tell me that you're going to sell the house. And you sell the house, and you make a deal with Chrysalis Records, and it's a Vinnie Vincent album now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what happened to me. And uh, so for for quite a few months, the, they, they, he would have all these people call me saying, hey, you know, would you come back to the band and all this stuff? And I'm going like... I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I don't think so. So it just kept going on. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to throw out some ridiculous numbers out there and this and this and this and this and I want this and da 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 da. And just to make it just like, you know, like you're nowhere you're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Well, they come back and they decided that they were going to do everything that I wanted. So I, um, so I, I, I went in the studio and I, uh, I worked with him and we did this uh, incredible album and uh, in the sense of it was for me it was like um, like getting a big bucket of paint and just throwing it on the canvas and just see what happens you know and 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 because I could sing that way I had no other I had no other uh, platform to, to sing that way um, there were no songs that were um, that were a matching, matching, um, right? You know, th- my vocals and, and that guitar playing. It was like a, a great mix, you know, great, great uh, match. So anyway, we uh, do this record, and um, you know, from the very beginning, I said, "Look, I'm I don't have any uh, any aspirations of touring, and I, I and I don't like touring." And do you not like touring? No, I don't. I, I love being in the lab. I love being in the studio recording. I love being in my, my art studio doing art. I, I spend a lot of time alone, and I like I like it that way so that I can manipulate my vision. Are, are you a classic creative introvert? Probably. I, I to me, peop, I, I have a hard time going to see bands play because I see like lead singers out there and everything. And I just I look at them like everybody's a fucking uh, you know a, a seal being you know being waiting for that mackerel be be thrown to them or whatever. I have a hard time going to see bands play because now there are like three opening bands for every show. <laughs> I'm getting too old. For that. And, and and a lot of the bands are not even the same people that were in the bands originally. Right, right. So, of those sessions. Help me understand. Vinny's putting out an album soon, and it includes remastered or remixed vocals from those early sessions? Yes. Is that something you want him to do? I have no control over it. Have you... Do you have any... You know, I don't... You know, it's like a... a I'm not going to say, hey, I'm going to sue you and stop it. Let it come out, you know? It, it's something that I did, and if he wants to do it, let it be. You still get points on it, right? No, I don't get any points on nothing with him. But um, so is this? Is this still acrimonious? I still. I, I. I. Last time I spoke to him was maybe about four or five months ago. He wanted me to come down to Nashville to one of his things, and um, I didn't. But but um, at a Kiss convention uh, quite a few years ago in Atlanta, I. Um, I was there when he was there, and I went up on stage with him and, and uh, sang with him. And you also have... And that was the first time I ever we ever played together in front of people. Wait, even around that first album, you never did once? Never. I, I, <laughs> I, that leaves me kind of speechless. Well, it's true. Like, you opened for Van Halen back in the day, uh-huh. but when you actually had an album that was, like, right in the pocket of that, like, zeitgeist pop metal sound yeah I didn't tour with them that's crazy to me I look at man there was so much shit that you know it's like how much more stuff can you do to me and and me eat it you know it's like there's a limit to to life in your own fucking um, (laughs) unfortunately your ego you know 100% wow that's super interesting yeah alright but I love the guy 
even though he's he's you know mixed up and lots of things go on around him that are you know <laughs> that just seem to be so totally out of orbit but I still have um, I still am friends with him um, I don't think I have really any enemies uh, I, I just you know I just take it like well that was part of the movie you know life's too short yeah it's just, especially as you get older doesn't, yeah doesn't all that stuff yeah, seem like you know, li- li- to me I tell people life is about making the best movie you can make for yourself I agree yeah uh, speaking of kiss don't you also have a Gene Simmons connection yeah yeah I've uh, written songs with Gene um, my my kids and his kids uh, went to the same school together okay in uh, in um, Brentwood he was a teacher he should homeschool his kids <laughs> I, I homeschooled my kids did you really yeah I, I bet that was really hard. Um, it was hard on them. <laughs> yeah. uh, how'd they do in art class? Uh, not to... No, my, my kids... Uh, my son is just amazing. I, I, I'm just so proud of him. Um, he works for... An, um, he has a whole his own division at sur- Surgical... Um, um, have you ever heard of the Da Vinci Surgical Robot? Yes. That's what my son does. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. That's a real day job. Yes. <laughs> that's... Yes. And um, I'm really proud of him. So um, he's working on the new generation of the uh, Da Vinci Surgical Robot. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's called uh, Intuitive Surgical was the name of the company. And um, they're based out of uh, San Jose. And uh, I went there and I... Um, got to see the surgical robot and I got to play around with it also I was I, you sit in front of a monitor and then you have your fingers in these rings that you move around and then you have these pedals on the floor that you move also so I was picking up little pieces of, of a rubber band and putting them on a dowel from across the room this is like a high-tech version of the operation it was, it game. Was, it, yeah because you can operate on somebody like a doctor could be in New York and operate on somebody in oh my Los God. Angeles. Yeah, that, that that's mind blowing stuff. Yeah, it is mind blowing. And so going there was like walking onto a Star Trek. Uh, I bet you know, uh, Fleisch- set. Fleischman on the bridge. Yeah. So um, yeah. So they had all these. Um, I went. They the CEO and my son took me on this tour. We uh, went and uh, saw these big fat hogs being operated on with the da vinci surgical robot and they were like removing gallbladders and hearts and doing all this stuff it was just wild i bet but anyway that's what my son does that's so, pretty cool and i'm and i'm extremely proud of him uh we briefly mentioned perfect stranger yes from 1979 uh, are you're intentionally keeping that from the public you don't want them to hear it um is it just like, no you're, well you know one time i looked into the licensing of it and it was very very expensive I'm sure. And, and you know, it's like, do I want to pay that money to license it, and then I have to manufacture it, right. and then I have to go through all this financial stuff to make it happen, right. and it's out of my own pocket. Right. You know? and, and, and how do you market something that is 40 years old? Exactly. And I get people on Facebook, Instagram asking me, when are you going to put that out? When are you going to put that out? And, I, and I've gotten uh, calls from all these people who do reissues and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But the deals are just always just, just sure. horrendous. And so it's like, you know, unless something happens and I just go, you know what? I want to I want to get rid of 40 grand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a, it's weighing me I mean, down. It's, Let me get rid it, of it. it. It's hard enough doing it yourself, you know. Sure. Uh, like my new album, I finance all my albums myself. Right. And I and I put them out. But the the thing is, it's so hard to sell a CD. Art now it has no n- n- no power. It's it's just gone. Everything's for free. It, it is ephemeral, and I, I agree. It, all the arts, it's all the arts are for free. Nobody, I mean, you can have, you can have a million plays on Spotify and get a check for seven fifty. <laughs> you know, it's just wow. Well, emotional atlas so is, this, is so, the new album. So this is what happened. So I, I re, in the early days of Spotify and Pandora and all this stuff, I took all my stuff off because I felt like fuck you. Mm-hmm. I don't want to play in your game. I'm only going to make a penny. I, I already established myself on real radio 
for over 43 years with my royalties and everything from my songs that I wrote with Journey. And it's just like, why can't that be an even level yeah. situation? But it's not. And, and, and I feel so bad for everybody out there who are just trying to make it because it, it's, you're fucked from the beginning. There, there's good. And it's all passion. All these bands, they want to do it because it's passion. I've put all my energy sure. in this. I put my fucking life into this thing, and I want it to come out, and I understand all that, but there is no reward at the end, and that they've made it impossible. Well, let's talk. You mentioned the new album. The new album is Emotional Atlas. Yeah. We're recording this at the beginning of November. We will get this next month. Um, I've heard a couple of the songs, and I know they're not finished yet. So I know we have to... You know, be respectful of the fact that the full vision is not there yet. But what I really liked, uh, House on Fire, uh, it's this mid-tempo synthy song. And I, I just, I love, I, I kind of hinted toward this earlier, I love the way your voice has evolved through the years. And Thank has, you. has matured and has grown some new textures. Yeah. You know, it's, it, all that stuff in the past is called youth. <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> it's just, it's just, that's what happens. You know, it's that like you, you could run the uh, fifty yard dash in uh, five seconds. Now it takes you eight seconds. You know, but uh, yeah, it's uh, for six years I have been doing nothing but painting, and um, I want to talk about that too. And and so uh, everybody's going, when are you going to do another rec- record? And when are you going to do another record? So um, I'm. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something. So I grab my acoustic guitar, sit on the couch. I go boom, 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 and I go, I'm fucking over this. I'm, <laughs> I, 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 this the template of music is so boring to me. It's the same guitars, same. It's just all guitars and everything like that. You know, bass, everything. That template, I just was tired of mm-hmm. that. I didn't want to make another one like that. So, in the early '80s, I got into electronic music, like during the time when Eno was starting sure. and everything like that. And I was, I was like in Hollywood, and I had a couple of synthesizers, and um, and I was borrowing synthesizers from all these different friends of mine and taking them to my house and recording with them. So I did this, I did this um, uh, ambient. Um, album and a kind of techno album and remind you this was before sequencers and all that stuff so it was all hand done and 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 there weren't a lot of uh, synthesizers to to pluck from so uh, anyway I did this album and I always thought I'd love why didn't I put vocals over this thing mm-hmm. so I thought you know I'm tired of the template why don't I revisit electronic music and really and put vocals on it this time so that's what I've done and I've recorded uh, 10 songs um, I, um, I I I finished them um, uh, maybe about a year and a half worth worth of work um, and um, so I'm in the middle of mixing them I've recorded everything all mm-hmm. the vocals are done everything's done so I'm in the middle of mixing on this album. All right, so you mentioned your art. Mm-hmm. You do this really cool collage art. Fleischman Robert dot art dot music is your Instagram. Um, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been you been creating uh, like this? Since I was thirteen. Really? Yeah. And has it always been that style, that kind of pastiche of different? Yeah. Yeah. Since I was thirteen, um, what inspired me obviously was uh, the Sgt. Pepper. Mm. Um, the cover. album cover. Yeah. So uh, I saw that and I go, I, I can do that. So uh, I started doing that at a very urge, early age of 13, 14. And all my life, I've done nothing but uh, but ping pong between doing art and music. So if I'm not doing art, I'm doing music and vice versa. What do people do who don't have creative pursuits? I don't even understand what that would be like. I, I don't know. I, I just know that I just... Um, I, I, I'm just kind of a little bit of a, a an odd bird, you know. Um, but I love it, you know, and I and I and I think I do it well, and I um, and I'm uh, very proud of it. And I've gotten, um, 
you know, I, 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 I've sold paintings, uh, you know, for like 20 grand, <laughs> you know? So yeah. I, I, to tell you the truth, I make more money selling my art than I have selling my CDs. Oh, I believe that. I, I, I definitely believe that. Yeah. Um, and as unfortunately, as we're recording this, it's too late if people hear this to see your most recent art exhibition. But it's not like you won't do more. No, no. And again, the Instagram exists. No, I, I have a, actually have a show in Hinsdale, in outside of Chicago, and um, at the um, at this gallery called. Boy, I'm gonna I'm gonna mine. Uh, but then it's tomorrow, right? No, no, okay. it's already been. Okay. It's at the Acquisition Fine Arts Gallery in Hinsdale, and uh, my my show was on the fourteenth uh, last last month, and um, it's still up. But anyway, yeah, I um, I show out of there. Um, I I've shown down here in uh, in Chicago, mm -hmm. um, New York, Los Angeles. I've I've done this for for quite some time now. I I, I love this again, Fleischman Robert. Dot art dot music on Instagram. Uh, sorry to cut you off, but some of the pieces I've seen in there I want to talk about. Okay. Um, because you, you tap into these themes that resonate with me, these kind of like pure, almost like 1950s images, and then sci-fi, pop culture. The, the, there's like this Lone Ranger in space piece. Mm, I love that one, yeah. I love that one. And I, I don't know how else to describe it, but Lone Ranger in space. Right. Right. And then I did one of Tonto also. Perfect, perfect. And then there's one, thinking about those kind of wholesome images, uh, campfire girls kind of oh. a, as an alien invasion is <laughs> surrounding them. That I loved. <laughs> cool. You know, we talked at the beginning of, of this conversation about how Wheel in the Sky just, that was like 20 minutes worth of work, and boom, there's this classic song. Right. When it comes to creating art, is it more painstaking, or are there more instant moments where you just kind of see things you think, I'm going to put those together? It, it's it's just, it's like automatic writing. Um, it, it, I never know what I'm going to do when I walk into the studio. I don't have anything planned except one thing. I Before I go to the studio, the night before, I think about, what colors do I want to use? You know? So you, you don't like have a notebook where you think, no. like, write down ideas uh -uh, for later? It, it's like jazz. It's like improv. It is like jazz. Yeah. You improv on the spot, on the moment. And then you put down this, this color or a, a, a form or whatever, and you just find the mate to that, to, to make that bounce, you know, to make that pop. And so your each color is made to make the each color pop more. And so then it's just this well, piece with, of art. With the jazz approach... Are there moments where you're like, well, that that's not a hit. That's a miss. I've had that, yeah. And then I just paint over it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So, again, the, the website for, or I'm sorry, the Instagram for your art is FleischmannRobert.art.music. Right. The album comes out next month, Emotional Atlas. No, it's not going to come out next month. It's going to come out next year. Next year. Yeah. Worth the wait. Yeah. So, 2024, we will get Emotional Atlas with a cover created by you right obviously i mean who else are you gonna ask right um and then for people to hear that get it when it comes out where are they going they're going to your main website well you know i'm gonna have to um bite the bullet and um talk to spotify and all those people do a band camp page that's what all the cool kids are doing okay i can look at that too um you could sell merch from there yeah um I have a new website, robertflashman.com, also, and so you know, whenever I'm gonna, I can announce stuff. I can, I'll do it on there. Um, but I just uh, have had a great time with you, James. Uh, it, it, it starts with the burger. <laughs> I, I absolutely like. I, I would come back for that. I mean, it's the red onions. It's yeah, the, you and your wife come over here. Absolutely. So it, it's the brioche bun, the steak, the butter, the Dijonais. Uh, the red onion relish, Gruyere. The Gruyere is key. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is key. Uh, I want to thank Bistro Monadnock for their hospitality, for bringing the food. They don't do curbside service and here Johnny at Federal Barish, Street. The Chef Johnny. Uh, Chef Johnny rocked it. This is, and I know they've got a great menu too. Like we didn't even oh, get yeah. into that. I, I, the the uh, the rocker, uh, the the um, 
oysters Rockefeller are Ooh, really I good. It. I mean, uh, the, the caviar is great. Yeah, they have like um, all the traditional French stuff. Yes, it's it's just a great experience. The Parisian gnocchi. Yeah, uh, the croque madame. Yeah, Cornish hen, um, bouillabaisse, and like. Yes. Th- this place is legit. We went for the burger, and the burger is yeah. legit. So thanks to those guys for for setting us up with food, so we. Uh, could keep the conversation fueled. And I, I'm sorry it wasn't at a hot dog place for you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Happy holidays to you. You too. We should do this again. Well, maybe uh, when the uh, album comes out. Yeah, there it is. When the I, I'd love to uh, be able to... Uh, we'll go in depth. Yeah. I love it. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you.